Arcadius Augustus Romani, Emperor of Byzantium and the Eastern Roman Empire, and his royal cousins, the Princess Serena and the Princess Thermantia, will now condescend to amuse their imperial persons by surveying the merchandise here so gaudily displayed. Sire, look at what I have from India, the finest of pelts for you. Those who have been favored with an imperial commission will now present themselves for reckoning. The merchant Zephyria, five bolts of fine linen, bluer than blue. Excellency, fine linen in hues of brightest blue. Brightest blue? Brightest blue. His Majesty requires linen that is bluer than blue. Yes, Excellency. Did I order azure, cerulean, amethystine, cobalt? No. To make certain that you could not possibly misunderstand, I simply requested blue. Fine linen, bluer than blue. Yes, Excellency, but if I may be so bold, to be bluer is to be more blue, and yet even as blue becomes more, is it not still blue? Enough. Pray that His Majesty will be temporarily assuaged by these. Next year, ten bolts of fine linen bluer than blue. Eugenia, seamstress, one robe for his royal person made of every color. If it pleases Your Excellency, a robe for His Majesty made of every color. Are you blind as well as ignorant? This is not made of every color. It is made of each color. Here is one, here is another, each color separate from the others. His Majesty must be adorned in every color simultaneously, even as he is simultaneously Emperor and Augustus in one person. Perhaps uh, some other use for this can be found. Next year, a robe and a tunic made of every color. He probably wants it for He himself. thinks he's the Emperor, so he might as well dress like one. Demetrius, seller of silks, 100 lengths of purest silk. Brought by caravan from China itself. From caravan? From China? And it has been handled by weavers and vendors and caravan traders? Yes, Excellency, with the greatest of care. And you yourself are touching it now. Yes, Excellency. Well, then how can it be pure? To be pure is to be untouched, undefiled, and unsullied by human hands. I should have you thrown into prison for this affront to His I Majesty. Said, Next year. 500 lengths of purest silk. What you demand cannot be done. That's the impossible. Next you'll be asking for cloth made of gold. Cloth of gold. Cloth made of gold. Cloth made of gold. No such thing has ever been sold here before, nor in any such country known to us. Where is it? Cloth I, made of gold. Uh, I've never heard of we, such a thing. Oh, I mean, I, do show it uh, to me. I don't have any. Ooh. Don't have any. Is this not the marketplace? And are you not a merchant? And do not the merchants call out their wares so that all yes, may buy? Yes, Excellency. And did you not call out cloth made of gold? No, yes, Well, then you must have it. His Majesty wishes to obtain this cloth made of gold. Show it to me now. I, uh, there isn't any such thing. Oh, there isn't any. Where is it? Are you hiding it? Oh, dear. I hope he hasn't sold it to someone else. I really must be the first to wear it. Such treachery would be tantamount to treason, Your Majesty. Treason? This loyalty is so perfidious, no. but... Do not trouble yourself, sire. I will get to the bottom of this. Rest assured. about to show me this cloth made of gold. I can't! I don't have any! Don't have any? Perhaps your accomplices are hiding it. Or maybe you've made a gift of it to someone. You! 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 No, sir, we have nothing, nothing at all. Is there no one here who will disclose to me the whereabouts of this cloth made of gold that His Majesty has expressly desired to see? So. It appears you're all in conspiracy against no, the no, 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 no,
Yeah, 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 yeah. Excellency, there is no conspiracy here. Neither is there any cloth made of gold. We know nothing of it. You know nothing of it? All of you know nothing of it? Very well. Perhaps empty stomachs will help jog your heads. What does he mean? We move every loaf of bread. <gasps> Let not <gasps> one crumb remain. Pray that your memories improve while your stomachs feel pain. Do I make myself perfectly clear? No bread made, baked, or sold until I hold in my hand this cloth made of gold. Boys, boys, that will do. Well, why should they stop you, Rainey? It's his fault. If Damien hadn't said the cloth made of gold, none of this would have happened. No, everyone's going to suffer just because of him. And he will suffer more as he thinks of his hungry friends and family, and he will work harder to undo the trouble he has brought to them. Undo the trouble? How? Rafidus will tell the emperor he didn't give him any cloth made of gold. Who knows what it'll do to us then? Uh, remember, it is not the emperor who makes the impossible demands. It is Rufinus. The emperor is not even aware of us. He notices only the pretty things we make for him to wear. And now he wants to wear cloth made of gold. Even if such a thing could be made, we don't have any gold to make it with. It's impossible. A thing is not impossible simply because it has not been done before. We will find a way. We will all have starved to death by then. You heard Rufinus, no bread made, baked, or sold in our marketplace till he has the cloth of gold. Yes, but he did not say eaten. We can still eat it. If we can't make it and we can't buy it, how can we eat it? Irani, we know you're the wisest of us all, but you're talking nonsense. No, it is perfect sense. We will beat him at his own game. I have a plan. that Rufinus does. He speaks for the emperor, but he uses words that we cannot understand to give us orders for things we cannot do. Now we will use words that he misunderstands to make a way for us to do what he has ordered. What are you talking about? The emperor desires a cloth made of gold, but such a thing does not exist. We need time to discover how to make it, we need gold to make it with, and we need bread so that we can work. And we must get them from the emperor. How can we get anything from the emperor? We will distract his attention, make him want something else. Then he will provide. What do we have that he'd want more than the cloth made of gold? And even if we did, how would we tell him? We will go to him. <laughs> well, how can yeah. we not all of us, not all of us, we will send someone. No, two would probably be better. Yes, two. Marcellus, Atticus, you are tailors, are you not? Uh, yes. And you are handy with a needle? Yes. Good. You must now become weavers as well. Weavers? Yes, weavers of imagination, of fantasy. The emperor is interested only in what he wears. Rufinus is interested in keeping the emperor interested so that he can govern the kingdom. So you will go to the palace and introduce yourselves as weavers of unique distinction. But Irani, we've never woven anything. Precisely. That is what makes you weavers of unique distinction. You will offer the emperor something so astounding, it will capture the attention of all who look at him. Present to him the prospect of a star beyond compare in no other kingdom. Has a king chosen such to wear an image so provocative? None dare give it name, but have no doubt it will become his majesty's claim to fame. We don't 
understand. Neither will the emperor, nor will Rufinus, but they will think that they do. But what exactly is it we are offering to make for the emperor? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. You will weave on looms as empty as the words you have spoken. You will cut and sew clothes with no more substance than vanity and pride. But won't the emperor be able to tell? Rufinus will see there is nothing there. Of course, but they will not dare say so because you explain to them your handiwork, unique as it can be, has a certain quality only the wise can see. The senseless and incompetent can't tell what's being done, and thus they are exposed as royal simpletons. I think I understand. We are going to make clothes that are invisible. But everyone will pretend to see them. So no one will think that they're senseless. Or unfit for their jobs. I get it. When he finds out. So if he's be even more angry, how is this going to help us uh, anyway? What about the brain? And what about me? I should be the one to go. No, Damien, you are too quick to anger. And you speak before you think. Besides, you will be needed for the work here. Now, everyone, we have talked enough for one day. In the morning, there will be more answers and bread and much to do, so go on home and get some rest. But Marcellus and Atticus, you'll want something suitable to wear as weavers of unique distinction. If you're going to be weavers, you must learn how to weave. Little ones, little ones, can you give these boys a weaving lesson? Of course, Irene. Girls learn to weave when they learn to walk. First, you need a stool, a loom, a shuttle, and ones you have been a great help now hurry on home oh but wait there's something more you two can do to help yes Irene. there is no time to waste we must talk as we walk girls you will follow and watch stay where you can see but not be seen yes Irene. Irene, pretending to weave is easy and using fancy words to describe invisible clothes might even be fun but Convincing Rufinus to give us gold? And what about the bread? What happens to us when the Emperor finds out we didn't make him anything? Listen carefully. You will tell the Emperor you can only work under certain conditions. First... are absolutely stunning, don't you think? Which do you prefer, Rufinus? The ostrich or the pheasant? Either one, Your Majesty, whichever pleases you. <laughs> Sire, there is the matter of the new tax increase. Another tax increase? Didn't we just order one? Your Majesty's wardrobe is very costly. Ooh. The court has no money. It is up to the people to provide for it. Oh, well, I never thought of that. Uh, do you suppose they mind? Why not at all? It is their privilege to have an emperor so 
lavishly adorned. Oh, but of course. They are quite fortunate, aren't they? Very well. Handle it for me, will you, Rufinus? I suppose I could wear both at the same time. <laughs> the new taxes will be levied immediately so that we may prepare for next week's feast. A feast? Next week? Yes, Your Majesty, to celebrate the signing of the treaty with Persia. Oh, a feast! Next week! Whatever to wear to the feast. Bring me the latest in from the caravans of the East. I must decide what's best. <laughs> Dear me, I'm quite perplexed. Oh. <laughs> Just bring me all the rest, but I must be an emperor impeccably dressed. Quick, 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 bring him all the rest. He needs the very best. From the East and West, where he must be. Quite grotesque on any other's chest. On yours is picturesque. We all agree. He's in a bar, impeccably dressed. How better to How better dress to win the bed and win the very clearly manifest as he must be. Well said, Your Majesty. Our sentiments exactly. Who are you? And what business do you have in His Majesty's chambers? We are weavers, Your Excellency. Weavers of unique distinction. We happened to be in the marketplace this afternoon. And overheard the disruption. Concerning some cloth made of gold. We knew that His Majesty was sorely disappointed. Grievously distressed. So we have come to offer our services. And exactly what service do you offer? Sir. We are weavers of unique distinction. We will weave for His Majesty something so imaginative. So creative, so inventive. Yes, 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 but what do you plan to do with it? Do with it? Just imagine from our service clothes that feel as light as air. So soft and smooth upon your skin, you swear they weren't there. Diaphanous, translucent threads whose colors none can name. It may just be these clothes become His Majesty's claim to fame. Picture now a festival. The crowd awaits outside. Then through the door the Emperor steps his head held high and cried. The stuff of fairy tales. You can weave such a cloth? Excellency, 
Would we dare to raise His Majesty's hopes and expectations? Only to dash them to pieces? Would we risk Your Excellency's wrath? Which would most undoubtedly fall upon us. If we were not absolutely certain. Completely confident. That we could accomplish the task for which we have offered our humble services. <laughs> of course they can do it. Why else would they be here? Now, let's talk about what you're going to make. So, sire, would it not be advisable to first view a sample of their cloth? A sample. His Majesty wishes to see a sample of your cloth. A sample? A sample? A sample! A sample, yes, of course. Bring His Majesty a sample. Yes. <laughs> Excellency, I am so delighted that you asked to see a sample. You will thus become the first in the palace to recognize the most remarkable quality of our cloth. It is invisible to the eyes of anyone who is senseless or unfit to hold his job. <laughs> Invisible to anyone unfit to hold his job? Incredible! Absolutely incredible! Do you know what this means, Rafinus? I will be able to tell which of all the men in my kingdom is fit for the post he holds to distinguish the foolish from the wise. Never mind, a sample will not be necessary. Oh, this calls for a celebration. Send for the royal dancing girls and call for my cousins. Begging pardon, your majesty, but there is the matter of terms. Terms? Yes, sire, the conditions under which we work. Weaving of this sort requires great concentration. So we must insist upon working unobserved and without disruption. The process is so demanding, it may seem as though the efforts of Fifty are being Ooh. exerted. Yeah. So we will need fifty loaves of bread delivered each morning. But that does not seem so unreasonable for such extraordinary cloth. Sire. And one more thing, your majesty. We yeah. will try to phrase this delicately as to not offend. Working in such close quarters. <laughs> Our clothes will require frequent laundering. <laughs> but of course, I will have Rafina send for the servants oh, each no, day. Oh, no, 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 your majesty, we would not dare of imposing in such a way. We have already arranged with the local laundresses to collect our clothes each morning. And return them the following day. Lovely. Your Majesty, this is highly unusual. Come ah, the girls, lovely in. cousins. We are celebrating. These extraordinary men have come to make for me the most remarkable clothing available or imaginable. Oh, Rufinus, introduce them. The Princess Thermantia and the Princess Serena, two weavers of what was it? Peculiar distinction? Unique distinction. Marcellus. Atticus, at your service. Oh, do sit down. The entertainment is beginning.
this splendid, the latest in fashions from India to the Orient. <laughs> stunning, sire. Absolutely stunning. A tribute to your majesty's sense of color and style. Yes. <laughs> sire, a thought occurs. Knowing your majesty's impeccable taste. Yes. Some finery, some adornment to be worn with your new clothes might be most desirable. Jewels, do you think? Oh, jewels, jewels, no, jewels. definitely not jewels. No, 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 Gold. Gold would be much more suitable. Ah, yes, indeed. Definitely gold. So if your majesty would just provide us with some gold ornaments... We would be delighted to incorporate them into our design. Your but majesty... Of course! What an excellent suggestion! Thermina and Cervantia, you must help me I pick out the very finest things. Now, Rafinus, would you show the, the weavers to their quarters and chambers? Looms will be set up immediately. Oh, this is the most Extraordinary good fortune! <laughs> Rufinus was looking straight at us. I was so scared when he demanded a sample, I didn't know what Marcellus and Atticus could do. Irani will be proud of them. They acted like there's no problem at all. And they said all the right things. Irani really is a wise woman. She knew exactly what the emperor would do. Chloe! Tatiana! Irani! Irani! We followed and watched. Everything was just as you said it would be. Marcellus and Atticus used all your fancy words. The emperor thought that they were talking about beautiful clothes. Rufinus was suspicious. But the emperor insisted. Then Rufinus demanded a sample of their cloth. So Marcellus told him it could not be seen by anyone who was unfit for his job. And then what did Rufinus do? He told them a sample would not be necessary. Just as I thought. And the conditions? The emperor agreed to the bread and the laundry. And the gold? Did he agree to give them some gold? The gold? We forgot about the gold. The emperor called for celebration. And there were so many beautiful dancers. And then he ran to find you. Never mind, girls. You have done well. Now run along and tell the other girls that in the morning, they'll be collecting laundry. I must go to the palace and see. No, no, Damien. Sounds like Marcellus and Atticus are doing just fine. Everything is going as planned. The Emperor sent these this morning. I don't know if there will be any more. Please, take these to Arabia. Of course. All right, girls, come on, let's get there. Finish getting the bread. Yeah. We've got to get out of here. Be what do we have here? A dozen or more girls doing laundry for two weavers? How very interesting very unnecessary unless... No, no, Your Excellency, not unnecessary at all. You, you, you see, it's just a family business. We've done it all our lives. It's just a family business run by mothers, aunts, and wives. Every daughter, sister, and cousin has been taught from infancy with so many generations. It's a genealogy
we say? A model of efficiency. A pattern of cooperation and mutual support from which we all could benefit. Don't you agree, Excellency? Truly, Consul. They all seem to be doing something. If you could tell them apart. <laughs> Excuse us, sir, but we would like to commence our labors. If it pleases your highnesses, His Majesty did agree that we may work undisturbed. As you Certainly. wish. That was close. I thought the game was up. So what do we do now? I don't know. What do we do now? Weave, I guess. Common laundry girls. In the palace? I can't imagine why Arcadius allows it. Did you see it? Yes, I saw it. Their lives are full of treasure. could follow them and see. Should we? Why not? what they are looking for. The emperor looks only for things that will bring him praise and admiration, and he saw those in our weaver's offer. But how will imaginary clothes make him see any differently? Remember, the emperor is not an evil man. Vain, to be sure. Silly, more than a little. He sees no farther than the reflection in his mirror. The only eyes he ever looks into are his own. When he learns to look beyond himself, he will begin to realize that some things are more important than others. But how will he learn that? With a little help. From who? From who? Uh, from us and from those closest to him. Even as we speak, a way is being prepared. Before we know it, he will begin to discover that some things really matter. Some things matter not at all. Most splendidly dressed emperor in the whole world. 
world is all that matters to him. That's because fame and wealth and fortune feed his envy and his pride. But the treasures worth far more than gold are the ones kept close inside. A cozy fire at even tide, a bed that's soft and warm, the rosy sky at day. Nothing will ever change him. Change him? Bullying him was hard enough. How long do you think our weavers can keep doing that? What difference does it make? We still don't know how to make cloth of gold. Not yet, not exactly, but we know how to make cloth, don't we? Well, that is weaving one thread into others. So wouldn't cloth of gold be weaving gold thread into others, would it not? But what do we know how to do? We know how to heat the gold until it can be poured, to cool it, and then beat it into sheets as thin as paper. Yes, Irene, and just like paper, sheets of gold will crumble and tear. Thread for weaving must be strong. But, but supposing we took the sheet of gold and wrapped it around a thread, would it not then be a thread made of gold? We can do it! I thought we could do it now! Picture now a festival! how they're coming along with the clothes. The festival is only a week away. I really must go and take a look. After all, I have nothing to fear. I am certainly well suited to be the emperor. But then again, suppose I go to see and what I see is nothing there to see. Will everyone know that I don't know what's right in front of me? Suppose I'm asked to say what I would say of clothes extraordinaire. How can I tell that what I tell is I don't see them there? Is it possible he's an imbecile? They'll whisper as I stare. How remarkably idiotic. He's completely unaware. And far and wide the news will spread till everybody knows. The king can't see his clothes. Oh, that would never do. I know. I'll send for a Venus. After all, no one is more suited to his post than he is. Raphinus will tell me how the clothes look. It's not possible he's an imbecile, so surely for his post. Of all within my kingdom, I trust in him the most. 
he'll tell me of the progress of clothes extraordinaire. How perfect the solution. He's sure to see them there. The weaving of fine cloth takes great skill. Have you been weavers long? As long as is necessary, your highness. This pattern you were weaving, why did you select it? It is the best one suited for the occasion. Why do you answer like that? Like what, your highness? You say something without really saying anything. It's as though you're speaking in riddles. We say all that needs to be said. See, you're doing it again. Perhaps there's something you don't want to be known. His Majesty has requested that I report to him the progress being made on his new clothes. He's anxious to wear them to the festival next week. Everything is progressing very well, Your Excellency. Yes, quite well indeed. Good. I shall inform him. But surely His Majesty will inquire of the color, the design. If Your Excellency would be good enough to come closer and see for yourself. Indeed. Sir, will you not say whether the material pleases you? Remarkable. Truly magnificent. That is very gratifying, Your Excellency. Most satisfying. This cloth is so unusual. I must consider how best to describe it. What is the meaning of this? I can't see a thing. Could it be I'm not fit to be consul? How could this be happening to me? Now I have come to see, and what I see is nothing that I see. Can anyone tell that I can't tell what's right there in front of me? How can I speak when asked to speak of cloth extraordinaire? How can I say that what I say is, I don't see it there? It's not possible. I'm an imbecile. The guess the slightest intimation I surely will suppress all power and my post, perhaps, but senseless, I most certainly am not. I shall inform His Majesty that I am quite impressed with this cloth. We, we thank, thank you, Your Excellency. Excellency. In fact, I shall recommend to His Majesty that he have clothes of this extraordinary cloth made for his dearest cousins to wear as well. Clothes of this cloth made for us? But there is no cloth. If we tell Rufinus that the weavers are weaving nothing, He'll surely have them thrown into prison. We can't let that happen. They're doing something important here. I'm sure of it. Well, 
we better figure it out soon. Or we'll be wearing robes made from nothing to the festival. <sighs> so, weavers of unique distinction, do you think your cloth is suitable for us to wear? Will it be as becoming to a princess as you intend it to be for the emperor? Well... Uh, what, weavers? No answer? Nothing to say this time? I just we have, um... Well, perhaps by tomorrow, you'll have something to say. That means something. We would like a real answer this time, weavers. This is not supposed to be happening. This was definitely not in Irene's plan. What do we do now? Yes, what do we do now? I have no idea how. I have no idea how to solve this unexpected little twist. Dressing princesses in robes that don't exist. Wearing clothes made out of nothing. A lesson for the king. But princesses are quite a different thing. What do we do now? What do we do it's now? going wrong It's somehow. going wrong somehow. Dressing princesses in robes that don't exist. A serious, unexpected little twist. Irani will know what to do. We've got to get a message to her. With the laundry girls. We can send a message with them when they come to collect the bread in the morning. How did this happen? Wearing clothes made out of nothing. A lesson for the king. But princesses are quite a different thing. What do we do this? Now? We can't tell I have how. no idea. So how. What do we do now? Dressing princesses in robes that don't exist. A serious, scandalous, treasonous, treacherous, ruinous, unexpected little twist. What do we do? Clothes are there. We have a clue. What do they wear? A serious, unexpected little twist. We've got to find out what it is. How do you know? Remember the day we followed the laundresses? Of course, that woman was talking about the emperor needing to learn something. Yes, but the next part was very strange. She said that he would learn it from those closest to him, and that the way was being prepared, but we're the ones closest to him. Do you think she saw us? Yes, she must have known we were listening. Maybe she was really trying to give us the lesson. Look! Just in time, this morning, Marcella sent us a message saying that Rufinus wants to order clothes for the princesses made from our weaver's cloth. But the weaver's cloth is invisible. I thought we were trying to teach the emperor a lesson, not embarrass the princesses. Of course, but what if our tailors were to provide clothes for the princesses made from something even more extraordinary than those being made for the emperor? Clothes made of gold? Now, wouldn't Rufinus be surprised by that? That'd be you amazing. Okay, well guys. then, let's get to work. what they're doing. They're going to make Arcadius look foolish by giving him invisible clothes to wear. But it doesn't make sense. There must be something more to it. 
I remember what that woman was saying in the marketplace. When he learns to look beyond himself, he'll understand that some things are more important than others. We're talking just like the weavers. <laughs> <laughs> but what exactly is it that she means? What makes those ordinary people seem so, so happy? of the emperor to permit us to come to the unveiling of his new clothes. We simply suggested to him that a moment such as this, an occasion so unprecedented, should be witnessed by those who would appreciate it the most. <laughs> <laughs> and who would be more deserving than the merchants of his own city, who daily trade in the finest of cloth. <laughs> We're here for the Marcellus and Atticus will now present to His Majesty their clothes of unique distinction. This way, sire. If you please, Your Majesty. I've waited for this moment so long, I can hardly contain my excitement. But before I look, Rufinus, would you describe the clothes for me one more time? Describe them, sire? Yes, describe them to me. Tell me exactly how these clothes will look when I appear in them at the festival today. They look splendid, Your Majesty, absolutely magnificent. Why, these clothes are unlike any that any emperor has ever worn anywhere. Excellent, that is exactly what I hoped you would say. Rufinus, you are unlike any other in the empire. To you, I have entrusted the governing of my kingdom and, and the welfare of my people. I have listened. And hearkened to your counsel and advice. Therefore, in recognition of the service you have given the Empire, I hereby present to you these clothes of unique distinction. To me, sire, why I could never dream of such an honor. Why, Rufinus, I can think of no more fitting tribute for the degree of care and concern you have given my people than to have you appear at the festival today in these new clothes. Uh, Weavers, if you would assist Consul Rafidus. <laughs>
Oh, yes. Very nice. If Your Excellency would please raise your arms. Sir, your arms, please. Perfect, Excellency. Absolutely perfect. Yes. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> Don't you agree? <laughs> Rufinus. The rest of my people are waiting to see these clothes. Buddy, the festival is has already begun. Oh. Buddy isn't wearing any clothes. Oh, Rufinus. <laughs> Rufinus. The, the people are waiting. Sire, surely you would... Oh, just follow the route our processionals always take. <laughs> As you wish, Your Majesty. Uh, Excellency. We have not forgotten. That you ordered robes. Made from our cloth. For the princesses. We were not quite able to oblige. But we thought that these. Made from cloth of gold. Would suffice. Oh. Made from cloth of gold? Your Majesty, absolutely brilliant. <laughs> but how did you know? When did you uh, suspect? The brilliance was yours, or whoever concocted this weaving scheme. It was Irene, Your Majesty, the wise woman. Very wise indeed. Wise enough to know that even a foolish emperor could learn to see things as they really are. Come closer, wise woman. Tell me of this plan of yours. How did you know it would work? Uh, I, I... Oh, feel free to speak. I never imagined it would work like this. I thought that our weaver's fancy words would appeal to your... your to my to, vanity? Yes, sire, to your vanity. And that Rufinus would be too proud to admit he could not see <laughs> what he believed others to be seeing. So when the time came for you to actually wear the new clothes... When everyone in the kingdom was waiting to see them. We were to show you that there was really nothing there. And we had hoped... You would see that Rufinus had not served you well, and... Uh, and that I would be so pleased with you for having saved me the embarrassment of appearing in these clothes, that I would not have you thrown into prison. We never actually intended for you to wear the new clothes, Your Majesty. <laughs> Irene was certain you were not a bad man. She believed that you could... Uh, that I could, could learn something from this. And it appears you have, Your Majesty, but how? Well, perhaps my dear cousin should explain that. It was the girls who came for the laundry. They were so ordinary, and yet so different. We couldn't understand why they seemed so happy. So we followed them to the marketplace. I thought I saw you there. We listened to what you said about Arcadius needing to learn to look beyond himself. And we thought, perhaps we should look too. So we kept following and listening and trying to understand everything you had said. It was the day we watched you make the cloth of gold that we finally understood. And we told Arcadius everything we had learned. <laughs> the cloth of gold? Begging your pardon, Your Majesty, but there is something we must confess. Rufinus had ordered the merchants to bring him cloth of gold, but they had no gold with which to make it. So we sent the gold you gave us to Irene. And we used your gold to make these for the princesses instead. A much better use, to be sure. Though somehow I feel such finery will no longer be quite so important to this royal court. I will consider these to be gifts from me and from all of you. To the Princess Serena and the Princess Thermantia for helping me to see something. 